Hello, and welcome to the series of our guideline videos for healthcare professionals. In this video, we are going to discuss the significance of job contracts in general, and more specifically, for healthcare professionals, while seeking their future in many Gulf countries, especially in the United Arab Emirates, UAE. This video contains a lot of important information, starting from the importance of a job contract and your rights as per the UA Labor Law. We will also be discussing many important points you must consider before signing your contract. This may include job description and duties, employment dates, workload, salary, compensations, other benefits, working environment, probation period, termination and resignation details, vacations and leaves, restrictive clauses, visa and related benefits, malpractice insurance, and hiring contract attorney. This is Dr. Mohammed from Interface Medical Education, and I will try to provide you complete details regarding these raised points. So, keep watching this video till the end. I am sure that after watching this video, you will be able to understand many important things related to a job contract, especially in the UAE. If you are still in the job search phase, from within your own country or in UAE, then we will suggest that you watch our exclusive video for how to find a job in the UAE. We have provided the link for this video here, as well as in the description section. Before starting this video, we would also like to invite you to watch many of our videos made for healthcare professionals. I will request you guys to subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon to enjoy more of such informative videos in future, and of course, if you like this video, then do not hesitate to hit the like button and send us your valuable comments. So let's get started now. A job contract is considered to be an initial milestone and an important document signed between you as an employee and the employer. It is the best negotiating moment you have. Once you have signed it, then you are left with no choice but to consider fulfilling this contract. Therefore, make sure you have carefully read and understood each and every point in it. Do not hesitate to ask questions from your potential employer if you do not understand any point or given clause. You have all the rights to clarify any such point. You can even ask your potential employer to send you a copy of the contract for better understanding before actually signing it. Do not leave anything on merely verbal understanding. Make sure that all verbal agreed upon conditions between you and your employer should be clearly mentioned in your contract. If you're an international medical graduate, IMG, and signing a contract from your native country, or traveling to UAE on a visit visa, then make sure that the health facility is genuine and there is no scam involved in it. Research online, look for their existing employees on their LinkedIn profile. Contact them if necessary. Use your references if already available in the UA. Most of the newcomers seeking their professional career in UA usually just sign a contract without thoroughly reading all given points in it because they just need a job. We will advise you to consider reading all contract points in the light of some important points, such as new job working environment, workload, salary or other benefits you will be offered, and most importantly, your work-life balance. We will be discussing these and other points in detail later in this video. Once signed, do not hesitate to ask for the contract copy from your employer. It's your legal right to have a copy in your possession. The UA is constantly changing its labour laws to suit the needs of both employer and employee. With the recent changes, employees are no longer fully controlled by the employer, which usually used to end up with the exploitation of the employee's rights. As per the new law, parties can negotiate on the duration of the contract period. It may not necessarily be three years, as used to be. Second, and most importantly, if an employee decides to resign, he or she may do so through sending in a written resignation letter to the employer for minimum 30 or 60 to 120 days prior to leaving your current employer.
Please ensure to keep a written acknowledgement received in response to your letter to the employer, because cases have emerged where in the absence of receiving any acknowledgement against your sent letter, the employer denied receiving any resignation letter. Therefore, it is advisable to keep all such written proofs documented. You have the legal right to insist your employer receive any such requests in writing. In most of the cases, especially with small-scale health facilities, employers seem reluctant to relieve the employee from duties and seek compensation for the expenses incurred for documentation and processing if the resigning employee returns to the UA within three months of his departure on a new work permit, then the new employer will be liable to compensate the previous employer for the employee's recruitment costs, unless otherwise agreed between the current employer and the employee. If the employer wants to terminate the employee for any reason during the probation period, then he has to give one month's prior written notice. Any such employment contract must be submitted to the responsible labour authority in the UAE, which is MOHRI, Ministry of Human Resources and Emiratisation, within 14 days of the employee's arrival in UAA or joining the job while in UAA. A work permit is issued by the concerned department. If you have a part-time contract, then you can take several part-time jobs without the approval of the original or the secondary employers. However, you are obligated to take a permit from the Mohri. All private sector employers must transfer to the new contracts before February 2023. Health facilities or companies that fail to meet the deadline risk being fined by the Ministry of Human Resources and Emeritization, Mohri. Getting a new job offer from the UIA can be exciting, especially when you have just completed your medical education and desperately seeking your career in UAA. But this excitement and desperation can sometimes lead you to not to carefully read and negotiate with your employer and jumping straight to signing it, which sometimes causes long-lasting effects on your career. A written contract is important for setting out your liabilities, role, responsibilities and a lot of such information. In the rest of this video, we will be discussing such most important elements, which you must consider before signing a job contract, especially in UA and in rest of the Gulf countries. So let's go through them one by one. When you receive your job contract, make sure that the proposed job title and duties are clearly listed and it is aligned with the discussed proposal you verbally had with your employer during the negotiation process. As you may already know, in medical industry, your job title means a lot. It often reflects your seniority. Ignoring to clearly highlight your job title could result in negative issues, and you may find yourself in unanticipated job duties for which you may be overqualified. Suppose you applied for a general dentist position but the job title mentioned in your contract is of dental assistant. Overlooking this may result in burdening you with extra responsibilities and may likely affect your salary and other benefits. Therefore, you must ensure that the job title must be accurate and clearly mentioned in your contract. This may also affect your future job opportunities. Beside your job title, its description or responsibilities should also be clearly mentioned and should be aligned with the job title you are assigned and interviewed for. Still, if you find any discrepancy in your job description or responsibilities, you should discuss with the concerned representative before signing the contract. If the indicated changes do not align with your job title, skills or work ethics, then discuss this with the employer beforehand. Your precise start date should be clearly mentioned in your contract. Overlooking this date may sometimes cause trouble, especially when you are transitioning between jobs. It may be very inconvenient if your last day at your current job clashes with the start date of your new job. Therefore, check if the correct start is clearly mentioned in your job contract. Once you are certain that the job starting date mentioned in your contract is accurate, 
and your title and job description is also correct. Then make sure that the working hours or workload is clearly defined in your contract. Like for a doctor, you may be specifically defined as the maximum number of patients you will see in a day. Based upon their existing protocols for each coming patient, you must be certain of how much time each patient will take. Thus, working hours should clearly match your expectations and title. This helps you to remain productive and stress-free. For calls coverage or emergencies, specific details should be clearly defined in your contract. Let's say if you have one call every week and when the facility is in shortage of physicians, they might ask you to take another call, then will the facility compensate you extra in such cases? If your contract is somehow vague regarding such details, then your employer may try to use you for additional calls without extra compensation. If you have any questions regarding this section in your contract, speak to your employer to get some clarity. First, you must check the basic salary, as well as other compensation, and benefits should be clearly stated as you negotiated early with your employer. If there are any performance-based benefits, then conditions related to them should be clearly mentioned in your contract. For medical professionals, especially working in the private sector in the UAE, different salary conditions are offered by the health facility, which may be fixed salary or salary plus commission or commission only, or sharing basis only, or any combination of these. Details related to your salary appraisal, like is it annual or performance-based, should also be mentioned in your contract. If your employer provides bonuses or reimbursement, it is important to have these things written in your contract also. If you have received an offer letter before a job contract, which is beneficial, because it outlines clear terms you can accept or negotiate, then make sure that salary and other compensations matches the one offered in the offer letter. Being a healthcare professional, you will have the chance to work with doctors from around the world in the UAA, creating a multilingual environment in any healthcare facility. Therefore, every hospital have a unique atmosphere, culture and environment. Before accepting a job at any health facility, it would be wise to learn as much as you can about its specific features, characteristics and policies first. Your performance can be significantly influenced by your working facility environment. A good working environment may improve error rate, level of innovation and collaboration with other healthcare professionals, and may reduce absenteeism, ultimately improving your willingness to stay on this job. Healthcare facilities, where the working environment is stressful, may result in compounding the stress, and too much stress can negatively impact one's physical and mental health, leading to a loss of productivity, poor patient satisfaction level, and more. Therefore, it is highly advisable to consider exploring a health facility, working environment before signing your job contract. Before signing your job contract, you should also consider seeking details regarding the probation period of your job. This period is usually six months. Check for the conditions, like what salary you will be getting during this period, and if you resign during this period, then what will be financial or other penalties. On the other hand, if the employer wants to terminate you for any reason during the probation period, then what will be the procedure? Your job contract should have mentioned a clear termination and resignation clause, specifying related details in it. For example, a job contract may stipulate a certain notice period you and your employer must provide before terminating employment. Also, being an employee, you will be required to provide a resignation letter, as discussed earlier in this video, during an all A labour law details. Make sure that the reasons for possible termination of the contract are clearly stated in it, and you understand each point. You want to avoid a situation where your contract is terminated without warning and you are unsure as to the reason why it occurred. You must discuss vacations and leaves policy with your employer beforehand, which might also be considered part of compensation and benefits. This should be clearly reflected in your contract so that you fully understand when these resources are available to you. 
According to UA Labor Law, private health sector employees are entitled to at least one day of paid rest per week. The health facility may increase the number of weekly rest days. Additionally, employees are entitled to a paid leave on public holidays. If an employee is required to work during holidays or leaves, he or she will be compensated with another rest day or be paid for that day. Some health facilities may allow you to stack your vacations for the next year. Some health facilities usually request that holidays should be used between a certain time of the year. Sick leave is typically subject to the minimum legislation in the areas of practice. You should also check terms around getting paid during holidays and sick leaves. Health facilities also have differing leave allocation, days for family responsibility and maternity leave. When you're scoping these two out, make sure to check what the deal is regarding how much or if you'll get paid during these periods. Pay tends to differ during these different leave types, especially maternity leave. So if you are planning to have a baby, make sure you know how much you'll be getting paid so that you can budget accordingly. Your employer may include restrictive clauses in your contract to prohibit you acting in a manner that could harm an employer's interests. Like adding a non-compete clause may restrict you to practice within a particular radius, preventing a conflict of interest. Kindly understand that the radius in downtown Dubai and in rural areas can make a lot of difference. For non-solicitation, employers may prevent you from recruiting any of the co-workers after you have left the employer. While in confidentiality clause, the employer may try to prevent you from divulging the health facility important information to unauthorised third parties. Finding such restrictive clauses shouldn't necessarily scare you away. It's simply beneficial to be aware of your rights and obligations before becoming legally bound to a contract. But you must ensure that such restrictions do not negatively impact you during the job and in future. After your work permit for the UAA is approved, it serves as an entry permit, allowing you to enter the UAE on the grounds of employment. It is valid for 30 days and can be extended for another 30 days, and during this duration, your employer has to make proper arrangements for your residency visa, Emirates ID and your labour card. Before signing your job contract, it is advised to consider checking visa, airfare cost coverage. After this process, you can sponsor your family members and bring them into the UAE. In most cases, it is your employer who is in charge of covering these costs, especially the UAE work permit costs. Due to medical tourism in the UAE, more and more patients from around the world are attracted to this part of the world. This has also increased the number of claims or lawsuits arising from acts of negligence, errors or omissions of medical professionals such as doctors, nurses, dentists, pharmacists and other allied health professionals. In most cases, especially for doctors, malpractice insurance is a mandatory requirement for medical professionals at UAE. This insurance will cover the legal and court fees and damages awarded to the claimant in the event of a lawsuit. You must clarify from your employer if the health facility offers malpractice insurance. Like if being a medical professional, a patient sues you, then how the health facility is going to cover it. This point should not be left on mere discussion, but it should be clearly defined in your job contract. While signing your job contract, if you are not certain by many or few of the clauses laid down by your employer in your contract, then it is advisable to consider seeking help from contract attorney. Because geographically, you may face different rules and regulations in different emirates of UA or even in different Gulf countries. Such an attorney may help you understand many legal wordings and their implications that may be used in your contract. That's all from us. Hopefully this video will be beneficial for you and will clarify many of your questions related to job contracts. Remember, it is your right to raise any concerns you have before signing 
and you are under no obligation to sign anything you are not comfortable with. It's also better to get these questions out of the way early to avoid any issues further down the line. The more clarity you have, the better it would be. In the end, do not forget to watch many of our videos made for healthcare professionals. Hopefully, you may have liked this video then do not forget to hit the like button. Share, comment and subscribe to our channel. Have a good day. Bye.